This is Lake Harweir Station, Australasia's first ever carbon positive farm. It's home to farmers Justine and Jeff Ross, who are passionate about disrupting the traditional farming model. Well, we have this belief that farming can help heal the planet rather than having a negative effect. And if we sequester more carbon than we emit, then we're doing exactly that. The station is two times carbon positive, but their aim is to be five times that. One way they're making that happen, more than 10,000 trees will be planted each year for the next 10 years. As the world begins to demand carbon zero food and fibre, this country can be in pole position. It gives us a real point of difference on the world stage. We not only need to do this for our sector, we need to do this for the planet. And it's been turning heads with criticism of their woke practices. I didn't understand why the sheep would be put through chutes and sort of land on gravel. So we started making beautiful little mattresses that they could land on. Oh, please welcome Justine and Jeff Ross. Welcome, guys. Okay, I'm just going to say, you were living a pretty sweet life. You were living in a Hearn Bay mansion, mm -hmm. and that looks really hard. So, <laughs> so why did you do it? I guess we didn't feel like we were doing enough for the climate and biodiversity crisis um, fast enough. Mm. Um, Jeff didn't want to have any more queuing for lattes in Hearn Bay. Yeah. <laughs> and um, we... And maybe it's time to get back to our roots as well. Yeah. So, you know, we both came from farming backgrounds some time ago. Mm. But we knew nothing about sheep and beef farming. At all. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was a it was it was a huge move, big contrast yeah. in lifestyles. You guys, you guys have really big goals with this farm. What other things are you planning to do to achieve those goals? Um, well, look, you know, as the world needs to decarbonise, we've all got to do two things. We've got to reduce what we put up there, and we've got to remove what's already up there. So we're working, we're trying to work on both. So on removals, as the little intro said, we're, we're planting lots of trees mm. every year. Uh, we're also looking at soil carbon, um, because soil is actually a massive sequester of carbon. Mm. But on the other side, we're also trying to reduce what is going up there. So we're moving to solar, hydro, uh, we see there's an EV tractor in New Zealand. We've been and s had a look at it. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Fossil cool. fuel free would yeah. be good. Yeah. Completely fossil free. And so free. super interesting that you weren't just on the farm and going, look, we've got to do this a different way. You actually went there with the goal of being carbon neutral. Yep. Um, is, it, is it realistic for all farms around New Zealand to, to become carbon positive? Um, well, look, every, there's 50,000 farms in New Zealand. Everyone is different. Um, we were the first farm in Australasia to be certified net zero. We're actually two times carbon positive. But we think now, we, we understand now there's hundreds. In fact, there's hundreds on the waiting list to get their certif certification uh -huh. done. So in short, yes, you know, sheep and beef farms make up 40% of New Zealand land mass. So that would be a material part of our, you know, our global emissions um, number if we could all measure the, measure the numbers of those farms. Very if you look at sort of four metrics, though, you look at um, decarbonisation, which we m maybe have been an outlier in, and then you look at biodiversity. There are so many farmers doing an incredible job around biodiversity, mm. and we're just a follower there. Um, but, but you guys copped so much flack. Like, when you brought this out that you guys were, were farming like this, you copped so much flack from the farming community. What do you think that is? Well, I think I was just uh, about to mention to you that oh. it's the animal welfare. That oh, we're, we're, right. Where we're an outlier. <laughs> <laughs> the sheep flying onto the mattresses. Yeah. yeah, hey. yeah. Was that a gimmick? Look, no. Uh, no, um, look... When you speak to your customers and they say, we actually really care for the way, um, you know, the wool is harvested, mm. um, we, we want to do stuff that is actually going to support that. So, Jesse, you probably didn't buy that suit jacket because someone said well, it's made really, really fast. <laughs> you know, but mm. if someone said the wool in that suit was actually harvested with care, that may make you want to buy that. And that may give us, as farmers sure. in New Zealand, and We've a just premium. come from London yeah. and New York, where both, um, all, 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 all the clients that we visited there just... Um, they pay us a premium for our animal welfare yeah. credentials. So I know the woke thing's been bandied around a lot. <laughs> yes. and I, I, I have, you know, some level of empathy for that, but we're paid a premium for yeah. it. So if it's yeah. woke to make, you know, money that farmers deserve, yeah. Um, then, yeah, we're woke. Um, <laughs> same, babe, same. <laughs> New Zealand is special, just got to tell the world about it, right? Um, this is the yeah. book, it's called Meet You at the Main Divide. It's available now. Please thank Justine and Jeff Ross.